Guess who else has gotten married that I'm very happy for? Aisha Harry! Love is in the air. It was our last two scenarios, not love is in the air. Well, lahi, they were. Oh my god. And then look what's happened. Look what's happened. Everyone's getting married. Someone's ladies. Married. You know, pray that to Hedjad Salad. Yeah. And get your man. This was like, I'm just, her, I'm I'm just happy, happy for her. Like, like, I don't, I don't even wish her alone. It's just like, I couldn't have pictured a better outcome for her, her life. And you know what else is really nice? Like, she, I think she's she's been married for a while now. And like she just didn't post it. Oh, so she's just yeah. announced. So she's it. just announced it, even though like she was married and it was her own little secret, which is so nice. Oh, I love that. Oh, so cute. Aisha, we love you. I love you, girl. Um, right. So what else been happening? You said you finished you. Yeah. I've got a very yeah. annoying trait where it's like I'll watch something even though I'm busy mm. and not concentrate on it because yeah. I just want to get it over and done with. No. So I think that's the shows like, that I don't really care about. Oh, so I'll give you an idea, working mums, I'll casually watch like those episodes and not realise what like where I am. Yeah. You on the other hand, that one requires a bit of concentration. No, for me I just I feel like after part one just part one was for me. dead. I yeah. feel like part two was lit. Okay, I'm, not I'm assuming we can talk about it because everyone else has probably seen it by now. I feel like it was very hard to digest or understand. So what I'm getting is that Reese was never an actual person that like, he's communicating with, it was just in his head. So Reese is a real human. Yeah, but he never like had interactions so, with him. No, so you know how he was like constantly listening to his podcast when he was dealing with the whole Marianne situation, but he was having that out of body experience, it wasn't really him. It was right. Yeah, he, had to, he just kept listening to Reese Montrose, Reese Montrose, which I think what happened was that podcast just manifested into that person. Okay. So it became Reese. So Reese is now like him, but the dark side of him. Okay. Because he was egging him on to kill. Right. Do you get it? So it's like a split personality. Yeah, but it was just created from constantly listening to, to Reese. this man. Now, Reese, in the real world, has no idea who he is. Yeah. He's never met Reese. He just knows Reese through his podcast and all the information that he's reading on him. But when he infatuated with Reese because of his humble beginnings and how he came to power. So when he kidnapped Reese and he like choked him, was that the actual G was that the actual That was the real Reese. See when he see when he opened the door and he was like, Oh the F are you? Yeah. Doesn't know who he is. Right, so we actually killed the real Reese. Killed the real Reese. But Reese has no, does not no know Reese him. Has him. Okay. Yeah. So then the other bit that I don't get is the ending. So he's blamed everything on that lovely girl that's yeah. a student. Yeah. Um, exactly. But how did he get scot free? That's the bit that I missed. So what I what I think happened was he's attempted to, oh, TW. He's attempted to when he's jumping off when he's jumped off the bridge. All right. To unalive himself. Okay. Now he it didn't work. So he's now in the hospital. Right. I when he's in that. the hospital, he decides that he's going to disclose everything to this woman that he is dating in love with. Okay. So when he's told her everything. She's clearly accepted that. Now, what I think their agreement is, is that he's allowed to essentially kill if it benefits her. If, it's ben if it benefits her and if it benefits their Thanks. situation, she, okay. right? And also, what she's promised him is that he's allowed to come back into the open. And because she's got so much power, you know, she's Tom Locke's Tom yeah. daughter, they have a lot of power over the media, he's essentially, you know, he even said the show's Illuminati level billionaire. Yeah. So what I imagine, what I think's happened is she's promised him basically immunity and that she's going to also change the public's perception of Joe Goldberg, what happened with love, what happened with Beck. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you see when they're sitting down doing all those interviews, yeah. it's just him basically saying this is me. like tell it, telling his version of events but so that it, the public kind of supports, supports him. him okay so, yeah, so she's given him protection he's giving her protection okay nice yeah. i get it now when i was watching it though i was like the story's turned and also she's inherited on. her ho her, her father's, father's so what's happened to the dad he he's unlived him. him yeah he's un unalived him Mm. Do you not know see the bag going through his head? No, I didn't see that bit then. Yeah, yeah, he basically, the girl had found out that her dad was still, even though she's like cut herself off from him and think, yeah. seemingly is living this life where he's not in it, 
is still controlling her. So like, he's the one that's responsible for the jobs that she's getting. Okay. So, like, do you know what I mean? All the that oh, sounds like such a nice father. Yeah. Or even like the boyfriend that she's with, she, he's like protective and stuff like that. So anyway, yeah, it sounds like a nice dad, but yeah. she like obviously wants to cut herself off from him. Anyway, so he's still been you know interfering with her life without her realizing. She got really upset. Tells Joe. Joe gets angry. Goes to. Okay, yeah. interesting. Shall I tell you what I've been watching? Go on. Cotton's never into my shows, but I've been watching Married First Sight Australia. Oh! It is amazing. Drama, drama, drama. It's gotten so good that I don't even watch Love Island anymore. No, I stopped watching that crap ages no. ago. It's so good. It's so jarring ever since. Zara should have never ever left, can I just Even say? when Olivia left, it got dead. It just dead. Um, I'm so, so yeah. sad that we kicked Olivia out because I just needed someone to have. She's hate. so delusional, <laughs> but I loved her. Anyway. Married at First Sight Australia, bloody brilliant. When you wanted a narcissist, there's a narcissist. <laughs> Sorry. Emotional manipulation. <laughs> Emotional manipulation. <laughs> you wanted people doing dumb stuff. Drama, <laughs> drama, drama, drama. I'm telling you, guys, I don't. Every season. Well, of Married at First everyone on there. Every single thing. You wanted the lovey dovey cop. They're right there for you. Everything's there. Like, I don't know what source they add to Married at First Sight Australia. Every season just bangs. Like, it's so good. No yeah, way. And the other thing is, like, I don't actually watch the full episodes. Like, I watch shows via TikTok now. So the yeah, people do, like, part ones to part so eight. So that's how I've been catching up with Love Island. Me too. Just in case. Because I knew, I was like, I don't want to watch the full episode with all the breaks. No, but you've already wasted two months of your life watching yeah, it. Yeah, like, it's just too much. Out. And also, like, it's an hour long episode. I can't. I just need, like, the main bits. And most, Love, Love Island is mostly crap. But then there's occasional things that they mm -hmm. add in there. And, and like, those well, things you can just get in a ten second clip yeah, from TikTok. exactly. And that's how I watch it. Mm. So, yeah. That is basically... That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing. That is my content, really. Luther, the film. Oh my god! Did you watch it? I watched it. Listen, it was so good. I swear to. What did I say to you? There is a source. There's like, there's Hawash that they add to BBC dramas. Yeah, that's just like on another level. I was just, I just thought it was like such a like it was such a nice action thriller film. Loved it, mm. absolutely. And it was just like the perfect length. Exactly. It, was it wasn't a long. series, so you didn't have like, to wait. Yeah, and watch. it wasn't a slow burner, it was straight boom, into boom, the boom, action. Boom, like, when he went mm. into prison, I was like, well. How do you think Sabrina Alba films when she watches her husband on TV? I think she's bloody proud. <laughs> proud of it. Talking about <laughs> Sabrina Alba, did you, did you see her outfit on the Oscars? No, I haven't. Yeah, she looks really pretty. She's just looking amazing, like post and baby world. looks unreal. Yeah. Is she have a baby? I'm sure she had a baby. Sabrina Alba has one of her I'm sure she's had a baby, unless it was a rumor. <laughs> Sabrina Alba and Idris pregnant. Go on TikTok. TikTok knows everything. I think she has. No, have well, she had a baby boy? Too. No, this can guys. How have we missed this information? Because she doesn't post about it. It's very private, private. But I don't know why I know. I no, know. this is not. Is Sabrina pregnant? Meet her husband, Idris, baby, and family. Or we revealed that he and his wife have just welcomed a baby son into the world, and we could have been more delighted for that. Well, there you go. That is crazy. No one knew. They did know. Who knew? She. Th I. I didn't even see like her pregnancy belly. Like, she looks amazing. She looks so nice. She looks incredible. Baby, wait, where? Alarm Barry. Alarm Barry. We need your trainer to bring her. Oh, what about her? Anyway, I was going to. So as I was saying, how do you think she feels when she watches it just in the movie? Oh, she must. Love I would just be like, that's my baby. You know what my dream is? Like in my. <laughs> Last night I watched the Oscars because my kid wouldn't go to sleep, so I was just watching people get an award and they're like, dreams do come true. <laughs> dreams are a possibility. <laughs> In mind, I'm like, imagine you and me with an Oscar. Oh my god. Little Lee. old me, Kelly and Arma. What would you even say in your speech? I'll be like, guys. I can't believe this. I'll be like Adele. I'll make like funny little jokes so people make memes out of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that is a nice dress. She looks beautiful. Wow, I need to know how she does her hair. Mm. I'm trying to go, you know I'm going to go like Bob Shaw. No. Yeah. I still can't get over how you said they were welcome to sun into the world. I've got a baby. Oh, God. I love my bees. Oh, May Allah oh, bless you and your children. Amen. Upon Amin. Anyway, what was I going to say? Oscars. Yeah, I'll probably just tell a little story about how I came on the boats. <gasps> 
boat. Can boat. you believe it? This conservative party. Yes, yeah, see, I don't know what's going on. Oh, we've been up in. I know there's a bill. There's a bill involved. <sighs> and immigrants. So this is a conversation for another day. Anyway, do you know, do you know about Gary Lineker? I know about Gary Lineker, yes, yeah. yes. It's very smart how they've spinned it, though. Mm. So instead of discussing the bill, they discuss Gary's tweet. I know. Very, wait, very wait to, Yeah, way to like hide oh, away Gary. from the real problem. Anyway. What was I going to say? Solidarity with Gary Lineker? Solidarity with Gary Lineker. Solidarity. I did. And you know what, darling? I'm going to tell you, BBC, I'm not paying no more TV licence. Do you know what really pisses me off about the BBC? It's the double bloody standard oh, it's about shocking. people who work at the BBC must maintain impartiality, but neutrality. You know what's mad about um, impartiality? Why did the BBC allow Gary Lineker in the World Cup, right? Number one, they didn't show Qatar's opening ceremony. And the first episode, episode, the first viewing of the World Cup, Gary had very, very strong views about Qatar. About Qatar but then what is that? Rights. But then is that something, was that his own view? Or was no, that it was the BBC who allowed him to say that. Exactly. I thought it was on the teleprompter, orchestrated by the BBC, and he was sitting there going, Yeah, he was though, that's the thing, because yeah. the BBC allowed that to happen. But then now, but the and that was in bus. relation to Qatar's human rights. But it's like, it's like you know what it is? It's like they will vilify someone for, so for example, like him talking about the bill obviously affects poorly on of the course. BBC. How on the, the government. On though, the government. Which How, is controlled. Which control, right, yeah. Yeah. However, the, the Qatar thing, they can give a monkey's back to them. But that's the point. That's the, yeah. that's the exact double standards that people they, are seeing. They don't care about no. a Middle Eastern. A Middle Eastern. They have uh, MPs have openly said we accept Ukrainians because they are neighbours and our kinship. They're white. Do you know exactly? <laughs> that is what they're pertaining to. That's what. That's why they're getting accepted. Do you know what I mean? But our brothers and sisters on the banana boats. Absolutely mm. not. And the other thing that's really story. bad about the bill is. Um, the fact that they get rid of the modern slavery. So if anyone's been trafficked. And they say, we need help, this is what's happened to us. Off back to where you came from, love. Oh my god, I watched this film last night called Nocebo. Oh my god. And it is like, it's, it's, it's very ginny ginny. Oh my god. <laughs> so this woman from the Philippines has a daughter, right? And they live in the Philippines, they're very poor. However, the woman, Diane, from the Philippines, has got, she's a bit of a witch doctor. She's been given these okay. abilities to use like leaves and herbs and stuff to be able to yeah. either make someone's life hell okay. or heal them. So that's how she, she, oh, she, she's in the Philippines. There's another lady in the UK, she's a clothing designer. Now, she's a very wealthy, has a husband who's a marketing consultant, they live in a massive house got to, that goes to private school. The woman, the fashion designer, has, obviously she makes, she gets her clothes made in the Philippines and her clothes oh are made by this woman. Wait, the clothes are made by these, you know, people that are fast fashion. Yeah, so the sweatshop workers, the the victims. Okay. Right? One of them being the woman. Right. The woman doesn't have any childcare. What does she do? She brings her daughter to work with her. So the daughter hides under the table while she's stitching okay. this woman in the UK's clothes. Oh. The woman in the UK has visited the store once. Okay. And she said... In the Philippines. In the Philippines. And she said, I need you to make these people work faster. And I need you to lock the doors to make sure that they're not stealing anything. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, it's really hot in the sweatshop. This woman's been working really long hours. Her daughter's underneath. She's like, I need to go and get some coconut water for my daughter because she is so thirsty and it's really hot in here. So the guy goes and unlocks the door. He checks her, makes sure she hasn't stolen anything. She goes out to get to get the coconut water. What's happened? While she's getting the coconut water, the building catches fire. The little girl dies. Right? Oh so, my god. So these kids, these people can't get out because why? The doors are locked. So they're just like, you know, like, let oh me out, let me out, but they've locked the door. Look, it died, burnt to ashes. So what does Diane do? Diane goes to the So basically Diane inflicts from the Philippines, this oh, this sickness on this woman through 
Ginny Ginny means. Do you know what I mean? But I'm what do they fun. say in the, te- in the in the show? Is it does she, what does she refer it to as? So as she's black re- magic. She, no, it's not referred to as black ma- magic. It's referred to as she's a healer, but she's she can also inflict pain on you okay. through dark means. So anyway, she's whispered something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I So she's inflicted this sickness on this sh- woman. So basically, it's called nocebo, like placebo, but nocebo. So anyway, the woman's on the phone one day, all of a sudden, she has this, like, she sees this dog covered in all these ticks. The dog comes close to her, then starts shaking. Then a tick goes on the woman, and the tick goes <laughs> inside the back of her neck, and so it absorbs so into her skin. Now, ever since she's received that tick, she's just been having, like... Dreams. Dreams, horrible dreams, like night terrors, she's having hot flushes, she's feeling random pains in her arm. It's literally like black magic. Basically. Yeah, she's feeling random pains, whatever. She's just very unwell, her hair's falling out, all this stuff. Oh, God. Anyway, so she's also losing her memory as well. So anyway, guess who turns up at her door one day? Lady. It's Diane. Diane's oh. like, I'm here to help. You, would, you, you asked for my help, so I'm here to help. She's like, do I ask for your help? Oh my god, I don't remember sending for you. She goes, Yeah, you definitely sent for me. Obviously, the god, then she's like, She's gone. She's gone. She doesn't remember because she keeps having like temporary mo- memory loss. Diane comes in, she's given her a room upstairs. <laughs> she's living with her. <laughs> she's living with her. She's given her a room upstairs. Um, Diane unpacks her thing. She also unpacks all her little. And puts it by the fireplace and uses her suitcase to cover that section. She's also got a picture of her and her daughter right there. So she knows what her mission is to be reminded of it. So anyway, Diane is being very helpful around the house. She's cooking them dinner, you know, a traditional Filipino dish, but she sprinkles something in it. So, oh. then, the, so then the lady's eating dinner and she's like, ow, ow, my arm, my arm, she's having one of her attacks. Diane's like, don't worry, I can help you. Diane just does this weird thing on her arm and then all of a sudden her arm is cured. So what's, Di- what's Diane doing? Diane is basically like, Helping her in the beginning, so she trusts her. She gains her trust. I know she's, she's gonna, gonna and then finish her off. So the finish her off bit was the creepiest bit ever. Pause. I'm gonna watch it. There you go. Oh my god, guys. No Sibo Netflix. I feel like I've ruined the entire. Thing no, no, no. But I love it. But there you go. Oh my god, thank you, guys. I think that is the end of the episode. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> we've had stories, we've had laughter, we've talked it's, about the corrupt government, we've done been everything. A, it's been a great episode. Been a great episode. We should do episodes like this often. Honestly. Just a, what do you call it? What do you even call that? Just a no scenario episode. A no scenario episode. But if you've come this far, Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. We love you guys. So and much. we know how much you've been waiting for this episode. And I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, and all the people that gave lovely guys the cold tour. Was that a high five? I don't it, was know. Like it was like an over to you. Oh, okay. All the people that gave lovely guys the cold tour and told us that they miss us. We love you guys. Thank this you. And it's oil dance. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. We love you. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. bye.